I really love my grandma, but she's got no taste. She made me a dress for my birthday out of a brown and white checked material. It had puff sleeves, a lace collar, and a gathered skirt. It made me look like an overgrown rag doll. Yuck, Mum! You don't expect me to wear this, do you? Yes, I do," said Mum firmly. Your grandma's put a lot of effort into making that dress. Besides, it's a very good quality material. It's what you call gingham. We all had gingham shirts when I was young. It will wash and wear well and be a useful school dress. But mum, nobody else wears dresses like this. All my friends live in jeans. They'll kill themselves laughing when they see this. It's time you learnt to be different. What does it matter what everyone else is wearing? It does matter, I thought. But Mum won. The next day, I wore the dress to school. My best friend Susan fell about laughing. <laughs> Where did you get that from, Julie? Did your mother cut up the tablecloth, or is it one of her old dresses you dragged out of the bin? <laughs> It's so old-fashioned. My grandma made it. I explained. And Mum says I have to wear it. You poor thing. Susan tried hard not to giggle. Even the teacher looked at me in surprise. She didn't say anything. There was no need to. On my way home from school, I smeared banana left over from my lunch all down the front in the hope that it would stain. What a shame your dress got so dirty," said Mum. "These marks look very peculiar. How on earth did they happen?" I said nothing. She looked at me. "Hmm. Never mind. I'm sure they'll come off with a good scrub." She was right. They did. I tried hiding the dress in the back of the wardrobe, hoping Mum would forget it existed. Mum didn't forget. Where's your nice brown dress? I haven't seen you wear it for ages. We're going to Grandma's today, and she hasn't seen you in it. Why can't we just take a photo of me wearing it and send that? Come on, it's not that bad. I get sick of seeing you in jeans. It makes a pleasant change to realise you actually do have legs, quite good legs too. Flattery will get you nowhere. I said, "But if you don't want me to wear jeans, I'll wear my denim skirt." Mum just shook her head. So once again, I struggled into the dress. My grandma was pleased to see me wearing it. Oh, Julie dear, you do look lovely, just like your mother looked at your age. I had the material left over from some tablecloths I was making for the Red Cross. I knew it would suit you. Susan was right. I thought. No wonder I looked like a walking tablecloth. After that, I was determined to get rid of the dress. I thought of ripping it, but Mum would only mend it, and that would look even worse. Then. I remembered that Mum had sorted out all her old clothes at the weekend. She'd put her castoffs in a large rubbish bag, ready to go into the clothing bin outside the school. I pushed the tablecloth dress deep down into the bag, and hoped Mum wouldn't notice. The next day, Mum took the bag to the clothing bin. I held my breath, hoping she'd put the whole bag in rather than empty it piece by piece. I was in luck. She shoved and hammered the bag into the narrow entrance. I sighed with relief when the lid slapped shut and the bag disappeared. Good riddance, I muttered under my breath. Time went by. I occasionally thought of the dress with feelings of guilt. I told Susan about it and made her promise not to tell anyone. We made up some excuses to tell my mother when she next asked me to wear the dress. 
Maybe I could say the puppy chewed it up, I suggested. Or you could say a fashion designer admired it so much she begged you for it. And when you said no, she came and stole it in the middle of the night, said Susan. <laughs> That's a good one. Perhaps I could say you loved it so much I lent it to you to wear to a party and you haven't returned it. After a while, I stopped thinking about the dress. Then, one day while Mum and I were shopping in the supermarket, I saw a girl wearing a brown and white gingham dress with puffed sleeves, a lace collar and a gathered skirt. I stared. There couldn't be two dresses the same. It must be mine. I grabbed Mum by the arm and tried to steer her down the next aisle, but it was too late. The woman with the girl in the tablecloth dress was saying hello to my mum. They knew each other through work. I could feel my cheeks go crimson and my hands felt sweaty and shaky. I couldn't take my eyes off the dress. After making polite conversation for a few minutes, mum said to the girl, That's a lovely dress. It suits you. Where did you get it? I moved my eyes from the dress to the girl's face, expecting her to cringe. But she beamed. I looked at her again. Mum was right. The dress did suit her. She had bright red hair, and the dress actually looked quite good on her. Not as good as jeans, mind you, but not bad all the same. Yes, it's a lovely dress, isn't it? agreed the woman. I picked it up in an op shop in town. It's hardly been worn before. It was a real bargain. Mum and the woman finished talking, and we moved on. I sneaked a look at Mum, wondering if I was in for it. She was frowning, though her lips were twitching a little, and she seemed to be having trouble clearing her throat. She didn't speak to me again until we were putting the groceries in the car. Well, that explains why I haven't seen the dress for a while. I must admit it looks better on her than you. But next time, check with me before you recycle your clothes. She put her arm round my shoulders and laughed. And let's hope your grandma doesn't bump into her in the supermarket. Then you'd really have some explaining to do.